नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू दिस एक्साइटिंग एपिसोड ऑफ सत्तालॉजी डी बंकिंग मिथोलॉजी सत्तालॉजी मीन साइंस ऑफ ट्रूथ और स्टडी ऑफ ट्रूथ अपोजिट ऑफ दैट इज मिथोलॉजी विच मीन साइंस और स्टडी ऑफ फेक लाई और इमेजिनेशन इस और एंडेवर टू ब्रिन ब्रिंग आउट टॉपिक्स विच आर एक्चुअली हेल्पफुल टू एवरी वन एंड टूडे वी आर कवरिंग ए टॉपिक ऑफ साइंस विच हैज क्रिएटेड लॉट ऑफ फियर बिकॉज ऑफ हॉलीवुड मूवीज एंड ऑल्सो लॉट ऑफ प्रोपागेंडा एंड पीपल्स and area 51 we are not very far from that we are only 4 4 hours drive away from area 51 by the way so my guest is coming joining me from amsterdam and uh, we all know uh, it's a dutch and then it's a beautiful land i've been there many times and he has been an author speaker researcher and now he's a teacher's trainer in english language and he's teaching at a, and he has a program called ageless wisdom teaching and you can very well understand where that ageless comes from i don't have to say it my viewers know it exactly so th- so let us welcome gerard artsen thank you aditya very very happy to be uh, to be here thank you for having me welcome very welcome on very welcome on the show and I, and also you have a very keen interest in studying the uas or uaps or ufos uh you have been studying them for years you've written many books also so b- before i start off with thing can you tell us about yourself that how you got interested in this topic uh yes um the uh see i i'm I became a, a teacher trainer in in 2001 uh but I've been a student of the ages wisdom teaching which is more of a private thing um and something that I've been uh using as a background for lots of the volunteer work that I've done since I think uh, since my early 20s after my first visit uh, to India in fact um in 1977 um and i became interested in in the ages wisdom teaching after reading a book uh by yogi ramacharaka um and it, it essentially the book it's called gnani yoga but it's essentially about the evolution of consciousness as it as it uh, evolves through the kingdoms in nature and um when i found that George Adamski uh I I always also for a long time been interested in the UAP UFO phenomenon um I read George Adamski's books and several others and when I found that one of his early books was called Wisdom of the Masters of the Far East uh that's when I began to see a, a connection between my own studies of the Asia's wisdom teaching and the uh, UFO phenomenon Um so it started very early on when I was about 20 and uh, it really it really took off uh, around 2008 2009 I started writing articles and um um then in 2010 I published my first book about uh, the George Adamski's teachings compared with the Ages Wisdom teachings as I understand them and and so that's uh, that's the origin story of my uh, authorship uh, so to speak and uh, uh, ab- well at least about the, the uh, ufo uh, phenomenon so so one of the book is ufo and space brothers i really like the title of the book because most of the times the 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 fear psychosis is created that the aliens are always bad and uh, i am not in i don't know those things those facts but the any type of fear psychosis or the campaign to be scared of someone you know that is a very negative campaign that means somebody is hiding something because we are most of the people are not in touch with ufos probably they won't even understand what is a ufo they might think it's some plane flying in the sky you know, most of the majority of the humanity will think like that i must have seen many times but i must be thinking some plane is going through so why there is so much fear psychosis all over the world especially the west americans and mm. generally some parts of europe against the aliens india probably nobody will care about it if it flies through also 
Um, yes, and and uh, there have been many sightings in India as well, of course. Um, although maybe not so many documented uh, because uh, uh, people perhaps are more more used to uh, unusual uh, sightings and, and happenings. Um, I, I think you're referring to my book, uh, uh, Here to Help UFOs and the Space Brothers. Um, and I think the fear factor has, has two reasons. Um, first of all, when um, the first people began to come forward in the 1950s that to, to, to share uh, their accounts of, of contacts with, uh, with the visitors from space who had landed and had approached them and, and allowed them you know, to get to know each other and, and uh, learn more about uh, the visitors' uh, equipment and intentions and their message. Um, they, you know, there was, a, there was a huge interest from the public uh, we should remember that at the time, the 1950s, the world was in the middle of the Cold War, and um, uh, this was uh, this was you know this was a very uh, not not only a dangerous period uh, in terms of uh, impending nuclear annihilation, um, but it also weighed very heavily psychologi psychologically on on people's um, um, yeah people's way of living and and uh, how they felt about the world um and this this message the realization that there are other people out there in space and that they were visiting us and um they they came you know there's there's various uh, um various people especially in the united states who came forward i mentioned george adamski there were others truman bathroom buck nelson uh, um, Daniel Fry, uh, Howard Menger, to name just a few. But the the interesting thing is the message was basically all the same. You, humanity, have to cooperate in order to survive and move into um, an era of of living together in a harmful and peaceful way, so that you will secure your your um, future in the long term, rather than destroy each other. Um, of course, when when that message started to become popular and people began to listen up to it, uh, the authorities became worried because they needed public support for funding the war, the war efforts, the Cold War efforts of, of you know developing ever stronger nuclear weapons, especially nuclear weapons at the time. Um, so it was not in their interest that this message was um, gaining popularity. Um, and they began a counter-offensive through disinformation. You know, the disinformation campaign about the uh, UFO um, phenomenon uh, started, um, I would say, um, in, the, in the second half of the 1950s. Of course, before that, there were, there were cover-ups of sources that have been crashed to give humanity solid evidence of their existence. Um, but um, it, 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 when, when, when the public began to show a real interest in, in the message, especially uh, about peace and cooperation and justice, social justice, uh, that's when the authorities became worried and started to inject to, to contaminate the uh, the uh, public way of thinking about uh, the visitors from space with this information and you will perhaps know that there were no stories of alien abductions or cattle mutilations or other atrocities uh, during that time the first story first account of an alien abduction only happened in 1961 and i believe you know, all those stories, I'm not denying people's experiences. What I'm saying is that it's probably not the aliens, not the extraterrestrials who were responsible for those experiences, but rather the secretive government agencies who were working to confuse and scare the public. You know, and, and even until today, there are those agencies that have as a task to keep the lid on on the the reality of the extraterrestrial visitors uh, as much as possible. So that's one reason for the fear 
uh, factor regarding this topic. Another reason is humanity's um, persistent confusion about our own nature, about who we really are. You now we we tend to see each other, especially in this day and age, where competition is is rife and and uh, more stronger than than ever. Um, you know, it seems like we have to compete for our place under the sun. And if you're not uh, if you're not smart enough, if you're not bold enough, uh, you end up in the streets without healthcare. Uh, you know, especially in a, in, a, in the richest, wealthiest country in the world, like like the United States, um, and. Because we we have been raised to think of each other as separate units, separate from each other, we need to compete for for our well being. Um, we have a kind of instilled fear of the other, uh, any anyone or anything that is not um, immediately recognizable or that we are not familiar with, will be seen as an enemy or dangerous. And we we see that reflected in the, in the uh, ridiculous polarization that's going on in, in politics in almost every country today. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's um, uh, unfortunately, it's also affecting our, our livelihoods and it's affecting the health, not only of individuals, but also of the planet. So there's, I think there's those two factors at play. You know, you have been inspired the, by the work of George Adamski a lot. I've seen that. And uh, and I have heard his name a lot, but now you're giving me a task to find out more because he lives very close to me, Pasadena, which is not very far, three hours drive, two and a half hours drive. So the, so tell me something about George Adamski's 1952 a uh, connection, like he connected with some saucer, so, saucy something, some uh, somebody, and he built on that. So can you tell me something a little bit about it so that the viewers can also know George Adamski mm, yes. and what was his work? Uh, George Adamski, um, well, he, he, he was a met metaphysics teacher in, in Laguna Beach in the 1930s. Um, and then uh, he and some students, he and his wife and some students moved to Panama Mountain in um, in the 1940s. And in 1952, uh, um, you know, he was very interested also in in uh, uh, stories uh, in the newspapers about flying saucers. Um, he had his own um, telescopes, a six inch telescope and a 15 inch telescope. Um, and he had uh, a camera that he uh, that he um, could mount on on one of his telescopes, and he was uh, out uh, many many nights uh, trying to capture images of uh, flying saucers, as the UFOs were known at the time. Um, and in 1952, on a hunch, he um, and and. He and two uh, two co-workers and four friends uh, set out uh, in two cars uh, into the desert and uh, the Costco Mountains in the California desert. And they parked the cars by the side of the road and waited. They had a picnic and uh, they saw uh, uh, a large unknown spacecraft, uh, which was also uh, registered in uh, Project Blue Book. Um, the uh, official study uh, at the time uh, or later on started later on but uh, going back to many many years of uh, observations and sightings it was registered as uh, I believe uh, sighting number 14 or something in Project Blue Book um, and from this huge craft which Damsky called a mothership they saw uh, some flying saucers emerge and then after some time, one of the sources landed, seemed to land in the nearby foothills. And George Adamski uh, ran over there or, or went over there. And uh, that's where uh, soon enough he uh, was faced with uh, an occupant from, from that saucer that was hovering just above the ground. And... Uh, he had a uh, what he calls a telepathic uh, communication in which the visitor indicated that uh, 
the interest of the, uh, the people from space visiting uh, was triggered mainly because of uh, humanity's uh, preoccupation with uh, atomic uh, weapons and, and possible warfare. Um, this happened on the 20th of November in 1952, and he published his account in a book titled Flying Sources Have Landed, uh, which was really um, quite interesting also. Uh, it was uh, a book, um, the, the biggest part of the book was written by Desmond Leslie, uh, an English or Irish-English author who had done his own research and wrote a, a history of UFO sightings uh, throughout uh, human history as far as documented, going all the way back to uh, to the Mahabharata and the, and the old uh, uh, the Vedas. Um, uh, so that's the biggest part of that book, Flying Sources Have Landed. And uh, George Adamski's account of his first encounter in the desert was appended as, as part two. And it also had some photo of his photographs. In his following book, Inside the Spaceships, he included many more photographs, also close-ups of, uh, of the same scout craft, as he called it, um, the flying saucer, um, as it was seen over, over his uh, residence on, on Palomar Mountain. Uh, so that, in a nutshell, is... Uh, is uh, uh, yeah why George Adamski became a uh, a very well known name around the world in the in the in the decade to come. He he passed away in 1965, uh, so um, you know you won't find him in uh, Palomar no, Mountain anymore. Uh, but uh, uh, his work uh, still lives on, and uh, I've been trying over the years since my first book to to you know to because well. Uh, let me let me explain why why I thought it was important to do more research and write more on on Adamski. He has been ridiculed to no end. He's been he's been derided and, and vilified um, because um, well I think partly because of the disinformation campaign, but, but also because his information was so specific. Um, he he he. He tells his story of meeting people. He tells his story of having having been invited on board spacecraft. He was not the only one, but he was one of the very few people who stuck to his information as he understood it. And um, he had a very clear uh, message um, for which he used, um, yeah, what we would consider, you know, spiritual or religious terminology. Uh, but it's really terminology, perhaps interpreted by people who didn't understand as as a new kind of religion. Uh, so he was brushed aside by serious UFO researchers as someone, uh, you know, who was so gullible, or he was just trying to make a buck and and uh, create a new kind of uh, uh, UFO religion and and make money out of that. And nothing could be further from the truth. So my interest was in um, uh, looking at the message that he actually brought, seeing how that related to the Asia's wisdom teaching, but also information from from other uh, disciplines, and uh, you know, it, uh, especially in my latest book, uh, the Adamski Book of UFO UAP Disclosure, I've shown that everything all the fundamentals that he's brought forward in his accounts and in his books are now being confirmed by science, by the military, by science philosophers, by disclosure activists, um, and you name it. So it's uh, it's time for a rehabilitation as far as I'm concerned. You know, if you if you look at his 19, post-1952, his contact, what he wrote over there, verified contact according to him and we see so many hollywood movies coming out maybe he was the inspiration behind that like all the movies which are coming where people are going up in the spacecraft and going inside and meeting them and a very you know like in the egyptian stories and the other places there are specific images of alien encounters are made in the stone 
by people who are documented in South Americans also, many places are there. And, and those images were digitized and presented in a much more ferocious look all over the Western media, Hollywood media. My uh, question to you is generally, whenever there is a, and the people who are criticizing him were all salaried employees of UC, University of California or somewhere or the other, they were all professors, that kind of thing. My, in the information you you spoke about a little bit about Mahabharat, Mahabharat and Ramayan, it's so common. It is virtually in every single page. <coughs> Excuse me. Whether it's Shukdev Goswami, Vyasdev, Arjun, Yudhishthir, Markande Rishi, Narad Muni, it's filled with stories where people are coming and this planet has been very often visited all the time. And these people are great sages. Like these are the people who were traveling across the planets in Mahabharata and Ramayana. Very common. Like anyone from India is not surprised with these kind of stories. Most of the people. But because of American movies and the propaganda and the fear what aliens can do to mostly Americans. Indians are not scared. Africans are not scared. And the South Americans are not scared. And American propaganda has gone to Europe also. So what do you think about how does how do the UFO phenomena is viewed in terms of fear psychosis in in Europe? Or are there confirmed sightings also or interactions also? Well, there have been many confirmed sightings as there have been in any uh, in every country around the world. Um and and yes Europe uh, has been you know the, the um cultural conquest of, by America of the world has been all-consuming almost, with a, a few exceptions, uh, even though in, uh, um, um, I, I think we, we were talking about Indira Gandhi before, the, uh, before we went uh, on the show, um, but in 1977, Indira Gandhi um, 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 banned Coca-Cola from from India uh, because she said you know there's uh, there's uh, no clean water in there's so, so many villages in India without clean water but uh, Coca Cola is everywhere um, so it, you know it was about uh, getting prior priorities right and of course we have the McDonaldization of the world of, of food um, so that cultural impact that the United States has had um, has been. Uh, you know, unmissable in in Europe, and and the same goes for the the movie industry. You know, we've been saturated with uh, the American Hollywood notion of evil aliens coming down with death rays and invading the planet, threatening to invade the planet. Uh, whereas there's been no no evidence whatsoever um, at any of the sightings that have been documented or that have been shared by individuals. Um, of any evil intent. Um, so, yeah, the uh, you know the European mindset regarding uh, UFOs is just as confused as the American mindset um, in general. Even though George Adamski was uh, quite popular here, he was, uh, um, and there were there are still a few pockets of uh, people who are studying his his philosophies, his teaching. Um, Notably in Denmark and Germany, um, but also more, you know, perhaps less organized and more individual in, in other countries. There's a, still a huge uh, following in, uh, well, huge, relatively huge following in, in Japan. Um, but yeah, you know, the, uh, the cultural uh, image of of uh, the visitors from space has been has been um, um, yeah uh, deformed um, by by the uh, Hollywood uh, depiction of of uh, aliens and and spacecraft and especially their intentions um, and that's where I hope my my research uh, will uh, will contribute to people taking a, 
uh, more independent look for themselves and, and informing, educating themselves more about what is really known about the uh, the intentions of the space visitors um, um, based on you know direct contact. I'm very well aware of the uh, you know of the uh, what we mentioned earlier, uh, the stories of alien abductions. Um, but I feel that it doesn't make any sense that there were none of those in the early part um, of the uh, era of, of uh, modern era of uh, UFO contact uh, until 1961. Also, there are an increasing number of scientists who are coming out now. Most recently, it was an Israeli professor of astrophysics and a former head of the, the Israeli space program, Chaim Eshed, um, who, uh, who came forward in uh, December 2021 uh, to confirm, yes, the, uh, the uh, extraterrestrials are here, uh, but they've asked not to make it public yet because humanity as a whole is not, is not ready for this, uh, for this kind of uh, broadening of our, of our uh, understanding of, of, of the world, our broadening of, of, of our, I don't know, view of life, so to speak. I mean, the humanity, I mean, when we talk about humanity, we are, we, if you're looking at from the European lens, we are looking only at the West. That's just less than 10% of the humanity, less than 10%. I know, I know. It's a very small number. Uh, it's a, it's not even 10%, it's maybe six, 500 million people. 7.7%, 7 .7, 0.8, uh, you know, 8%, sorry, eight, not more than that, 8%. So, but the rest of the world has no problem with it because they are struggling mm -hmm. with the basic necessities of life. And Well, may I, may I disagree in the sense that the rest of the world is also very much under the influence of whatever comes out of Hollywood. So, you know, um, they may have... Uh, initially, uh, fundamentally, a a, a, a less um, um, uh, what do you, how do you say that uh, um, antagonistic attitude towards strangers or or visitors from space, um, but yet you know uh, I know plenty of people. Um, in India, who are scared of of the aliens, uh, just simply because of the movies. I, I mean, we all know how media works. I mean, if there is no fear, exactly. then how will you sell? I mean, it's like that. It's like if you're not having Coca Cola, then you might be missing out on the coolness and all kinds of things are there. Nonsense. Exactly. So that's a that's a mostly propaganda. But if you look at the number of people across the world, people are busy in their lives and if any help comes from comes from anywhere and today the the major problem in the world is humans themselves because the humans they fight they try to control other people and that's a major problem and so far they are not seeing that happening from the aliens on a mass scale and according to my research on Mahabharat Ramayan extraterrestrials or devatas are always here always here they don't leave the planet mm -hmm. because they they have to manage the affairs of the planet. You know, very simple thing is like uh, cloud movement. I mean, cloud movements are stable across many parts of the world. Your seasons are stable, and clouds will always move, defying all scientific logic, modern logic. You know, why will a cloud will arise in the Indian Ocean in the southwest of India, fly all the way to northeast, and then fly back? So it's it's a it's a very stable phenomena. Now, my next question is, I really like your book, The UFOs and the Oneness, which you wrote over there in that book. You have given a, a alternative theory where you have combined the Vedic wisdom, which you call it ageless wisdom or, or some other aspects also you have touched upon. And you're trying to syncretize with the modern uh, science and the scientific discoveries. And you're... So the point I think that you're establishing is that they're not all bad. They, see, the some cases, they, some people are also experimenting on us also. Because they don't want this planet to get destroyed. It's being created by someone else for us to live. So, so how do you 
combine the two and and we are countering the hollywood propaganda out there that somebody is flying up in the sky the blue ray way is coming down and we are rising up in the spaceship so how do you combine how do you reconcile these things in that book that book is very interesting you should check it out it's on amazon it's by ufos and the pioneers of oneness by gerard artsen you can see his name on the screen as well well yes um it's it's kind of been my general approach to this whole subject um i try to find um what is it called again um a transdisciplinary synthesis i i try to find um points in common between different uh, accounts from from different disciplines um and uh, based on that you know we should have a pretty good idea of what what is reliable information um, so much misinformation and disinformation and, and misdirection has been going on especially about the ufo uh, uh, subject um that um, you know we need to a uh, uh, use our common sense and and logic and b look for confirmation of general notions uh, from from other disciplines and and that's really uh, what i've tried to do in in the book that you mentioned you rose and the and pioneers of oneness where i bring the latest findings in science and then especially system science uh, because that uh, already takes uh, the findings of uh, many different scientific disciplines uh, in order to form a uh, 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 systemic picture of of reality um and compare that with um the ages wisdom teaching and uh, and of course uh, there will be the uh, say the western uh, variety of the ages wisdom teaching because i don't read sanskrit um and um and the the accounts of the uh, of the contactees uh, of the uh, you know the contactees of especially in the 1950s not not exclusively um because after the 1950s as as I, we've established um the the disinformation campaign started so we don't know um wh when we look at accounts from people who claim to be contactees after the late 1950s we don't know how much of that information is reliable unless we um, compare it, um, hold it against the information from the original contactees, from before the disinformation campaign. Um, many people, like I said, have claimed to have been abducted. Well, we know that from the, ori from the original contactees, that is not what happened. People have been invited on board, and people may have been given implants for certain modes of, of communication to facilitate communication, things like that, but never with hostile uh, intents, um, intentions. And um, so from those different angles, I've tried to um, extract um, the facts as, uh, as can be gleaned from from all these different disciplines and and come to a uh, fairly solid understanding of uh, yeah of, of what has been going on um, so yeah that's and that's been my approach throughout so one very interesting thing you told me about people have been healed also not just being attacked but some people have been healed also uh the same thing we see in a tradition, like in, in Hindu tradition, we see, or the Vedic tradition, people chant mantras to invoke devatas. Mm. And uh, if the devatas were to come to USA and other people, we'll be scared hell out of it. Well, who is this? The whole idea is like the, I control my destiny, I control everything, the humans control everything, and God is you know everyone whenever whenever people talk too much about god i doubt their sincerity sometimes because they are trying to uh, what do you call it patronize dog god and just make it theirs their version of god but uh you know if you look at the ancient since you study the ancient uh, vedic scriptures also 
you know that the uh, that the the power of evil and other things exist in the human society and when you get purified of it then you come out of this entire cycle and go is called moksha different names are there karma cycle you get out of it now if i were to analyze the fear psychosis built in the culture and the religion itself like apoc apocalypse so many movies are there zombies people raising from the dead like it looks like a very fictional to me like if i look it from the vedic lens it looks so fictional because no dead body can wake up dead up it has never happened so far people have pre preserved their bodies in, in california for posterity Mm -hmm. But it's not going to happen. It's just going to be fossil for some other civilization later on. So, you know, it's like the same thing: Tutankhamen experience being repeated mm -hmm. live in front of us. Yes. So, how do you think that has to play a bigger role in this kind of fear psychosis? Psychosis against someone. It's like I am going to protect my territory. I'm going to fight with you for my territory. It's my territory. Nobody can enter. But the entire earth has been existing for millions of years. people have come and gone civilizations have come and gone disappeared like anything mm. so so yeah. is that have you ever seen from that perspective also in any of your books and writings oh definitely yes um you know coming back to a point you made earlier about the mahabharata um where where the visitors from space are are uh, very common the same is true for the christian bible you know and especially in the old testament this um quite a few uh, references to uh, visitations from heaven in fiery wheels or or things like that um what people need to understand and what what's uh, almost completely lost in the west is the sense of of cyclical um evolution and continuation of life um, you know we've uh, and we've seen many many previous uh, civilizations George Adamski has referred to that and and other contactees as well um civilizations of course whose existence and reality are disputed or downright uh, uh, uh denied by by mainstream science um but it doesn't take away the uh, many uh, anomalies ar architectural uh, paleontological and in many other respects uh that exist around the earth uh, as as uh um yeah reminders of of great civilizations that have gone before us and and uh, i uh, personally you know doubt if we should call our present civilization great uh since we have 50 million we allow 50 million people to live in slavery in our day and age you know what maybe in in roman times that was uh, that that helped the uh, the roman empire um which is still seen as a as a great uh, civilization and in some respects it was um but you know in in our day and age 50 million people living in in slavery literally and those are official numbers and the the astounding and and heartbreaking um social inequality and economic inequality that exists in this world um and at the same time the destruction going on um because we are we are living in a growth economy and we have been made to believe uh, that that is the only way we can uh, we can evolve and go forward um i personally have serious doubts that that uh, constitutes a great civilization um but at the same time you know we are at the end of this yeah i would call it a uh, compared to previous civilizations a dark cycle and you may call it kali yug um in western astrology it's uh, known as the end of the age of pisces it's at least it coincides with kali yug the end of kali yug and um you know we we need to realize that the end of this age is not the end of life on earth it's not the end of it may be at the end of life as we know it uh, the end of life where we have to compete and, and we we have no qualms about destroying our natural habitat and and uh, polluting and exhausting the planet um but 
you know, it, it, it seems like everything in the world at the moment is coming to a head and it's, it's combining into this perfect storm where humanity is being forced to decide and to choose. Are we going to continue in the, in the old way of competing ourselves into oblivion? Um, and and creating more conflict and and uh, greater risks of of uh, uh, complete annihilation of the human race, or uh, will we decide to um, to cooperate to recognize uh, that we are one human family, uh, no matter where you are, no matter where you're born, um, and uh, you know work together towards establishing freedom and justice for everyone. Not just for the very rich who can escape justice because of their economic power and their, and their finances, but freedom, you know, freedom at the moment, freedom only exists for the very rich because they can buy their way out of anything. Um, even, even, you know, in, in, in the United States, which is supposed to be the land of the, the, of the free, and we, um, how many people are actually free there? How, how free are you when you have nothing to eat? How free are you when, when you know, if you are unlucky to be stricken by cancer and you don't have money to pay f- to go to hospital for treatment? There's no freedom there. You know, freedom and justice need to go hand in hand. And that is exactly the message that was also uh, given Originally, by the uh, by, uh, by the original contactees through the, the original contactees in the nineteen fifties, you know, and yep. and the the extraterrestrial presence, the reality that there are people out there on other planets in our solar system, and in fact, life is universal. There's no place in the universe without life because everything that we know comes out of life. Um, and um, the you know so we we need to recognize that life is universal and act on that rather than see it as a lucky a lucky uh, coincidence that we've come out of uh, this planet and the, its evolutionary processes. There's nothing unique about it. What may be unique is our insistence on feeling separate from each other feeling disconnected from each other and from from the mother earth uh, mother nature um, and perhaps uh, you know to some extent what may make earth unique is the fact that we live in the dense physical uh, reality while on other planets life may be taking place on a more subtle uh, physical uh, levels uh, but no less real you touched some buzzwords here, freedom. You touched about the Roman Empire, and the and so the Romans were replaced by the popes. You know that, and and most of the Euro fought against the papal governance also, and the freedom movement was started in Europe from, and then the direction was given gold, glory, and God to go all over the world in the name of God and colonize. That is that was a, that is a story. And you are from Amsterdam. Dutch East India Company was the biggest company the world has ever seen, by the way. Viewers, if you want to know, check it out on Google. Wikipedia is a bad source, but search, search about Dutch East India Company, you'll know how rich that company was and through the trade in spices and other things. Yeah. Now, come to the question on freedom and, uh, and scientists. The, because there is a huge... You know, today, scientists, you know, are working in a very unscientific manner, according to me, because they 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 leave out all the challenges. And there is a famous mm-hmm. word created, scholarly consensus. So, in the age of internet, everybody is a scholar. People can read your books. People can read George Adamski. People can read Harvard University or any of the famous universities in the USA today. It might change. But today, whichever is leading, people can go there and search out their databases, archives, and learn a lot. Education is always free. You can do that searching. So, so in the UFO phenomena, like people like you who are writing in a kind of going outside the stream, mainstream scientific community, and you are in a way challenging their ideas, what they're teaching in the campuses. 
and uh, and we see so many private space companies coming now uh, spacex is one which is in the us very popular mm. and other you know other uh, companies are coming up in europe too uh, where uh, there is a richard branson who is launching his own space travel tourism again commercialization okay now in the vedic texts and i can tell you one thing my experience has been when the vedic texts write something or something is written humanity cannot go beyond that the one of the things mentioned in in the vedic text is is that you cannot come out of the the sphere of work that you have been given chetra chetra is the area which you have been given you cannot come mm-hmm. out of you can try whatever you want and but when we see somebody publishing pictures photographs of spaceships going to 50 million years away 10 million years 2 million years or some telescopes hanging in the space for i don't know hubble telescope is how far it is right now it's still traveling now if i analyze from the vedic point of view the mathematics given there the distances are exorbitant uh based on the dimensions of the universe if i look at the dimensions of the universe mentioned in the vedas is is 50 billion yojanas like 50 billion miles approximately mm-hmm. not more than that and they publish stories about stars and galaxies at zillion light years i'm zillion i'm taking a very loose word i'm saying zillion means like i don't know how far they project but that is outside the vedic uh, information because vedic information is given for this brahmanda brahmanda means the egg shell in which this brahma is ruling here so what do you say about those kind of information totally contradicting both sides mm, i'm i'm not i'm not sure if they contradict each other you know we we should not forget that information given to us um in previous ages was given primarily uh, for the state of humanity's understanding at that age at that stage um and um uh, has been handed down um in um um in in uh, symbolic um in, in very often in in, in symbolic uh, wordings and in, in, in terms um now i i i know that uh, the indian scriptures are among the oldest um if not the oldest um that have been handed down through through the ages uh but it doesn't mean that our current understanding equals the original intentions or the intentional uh, original meaning um and i i personally don't see a um uh, uh, contradiction in in what you what you mention um i think uh, you know because um uh we talked about the evolution of consciousness and um through cyclical um uh evolve evolvement and our understanding now at least of the physical world is much greater than it was 2000 years ago or perhaps 4000 years ago perhaps not um um uh, compared to um, I don't know 250,000 or 500,000 years ago but at the time um you know humanity was at a completely different stage of its uh, evolution and we are now on, only now beginning to to develop our our mental bodies the, you know th- there were people who would understand 500,000 years ago much better um than we do now but they were a very small minority and and the explosion now of of you know science and, and technology that we see around us and that has brought us much uh, um um uh, uh, progress and 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 advantages advantages um shows that you know our our mental capacity is increasing is also evolving um and so with that um you know you might you might consider, compare it with with someone whose um uh, meditational skills are evolving and penetrating deeper into the nature of reality 
Um, and similarly, I would think uh, uh, probes like the Voyager uh, that has gone out of the solar system um, is uh, um, yeah, representative of, of humanity's understanding, at least the physical aspect of the universe uh, expanding. So the human inquiry, human inquisitiveness is the natural characteristic for uh, all of us. You know, it is it is ordained in all the ancient writings, scriptures, coming to Native Americans. Now, Native Americans had a very rich sense of uh, awareness about the universe. Like uh, Native Americans called this entire land as Turtle Island. That was the name of USA, according to them, and they mentioned it about the because it looks like a turtle. So how did they visualize it? Like from the top, they did not have any information. They had no space satellites, but they accurately called it a turtle island. It looks like a turtle, and uh, and also they also visualize this uh, place as a place. There is a princess called Emery K, which is A M E R I Q U E. This is the English spelling. But native spelling can be a little bit different, but the pronunciation was Emrike. And mm -hmm. this was a very commonly known spoken word the, across the, uh, the first northeastern states. So there was a human inquiry about the things beyond human experience. And mostly those are attributed to gods. They will come. And we, will, we have seen that the prayers being heard many times. They are praying to certain uh, eagles. This was very common, uh, which uh, Native Americans pray regularly. Now, again, the concept comes down to praying to an eagle because eagle is going to come down and save them. You know, very commonly, in, that is across the cultures, whether it's South America, North America, or even Asia, Cambodia, Vietnam, India. India is called Garud, same person. And, uh, and so it's a common prayer. And mm. we all know that there are many traditions across the world, even today as we are speaking now, just like you mentioned 50 million people in slavery right now. And there are millions of people in Americas, uh, South and North America, who, who believe in prayers to these cultural symbols of theirs. And all of them claim to have been in prayer heard or these people visiting them. Very common, very common. The sacred sites in Wyoming, sacred sites in Oklahoma, sacred sites in, I can name out like at least 20 places, which are still people are practicing the Native American cultures here. And they all mention about their prayers and people visiting them, very common. I mean, have you done research on that angle anytime? Uh, no, I can't say I have, but it doesn't remind me. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. It doesn't remind me of other similarities that I that I have found and, and did a, a little bit of research on, um, and, uh, and that ties in with uh, something in the uh, ages wisdom teaching. Um, I must say, perhaps for for uh, clarification, uh, the strand of the ages wisdom teaching that I've been studying uh, started with. Uh, 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 Madame Blavatsky at the end of the 19th century, who founded the Theosophical Society and, uh, and uh, also had a very uh, uh, influential chapter in, in India. Um, and uh, and um, her, her work is uh, based also for in large part on, on the ancient uh, uh, um, Vedantic scriptures and uh, Upanishads and and uh, and also other lesser known uh, um, Eastern uh, Eastern writings. Um, her work was um, elaborated on in the early twentieth century by someone uh, by the name of uh, Alice Ann Bailey, um, and their writings um, made me aware that. The, the you were talking about uh, praying to eagles by the uh, you know original uh, uh, populations of of uh, America north and south um, a similar uh, similar uh, comparison can be made between all the major world religions in every world religion you see the expectation of a new teacher 
or a returning teacher, bringing a new revela uh, revelation about the nature of, of uh, reality, which you know are then which are usually called God. But um, you know the Jews uh, expect Messiah, Messiah. The Christians are waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. The Buddhists are waiting for the fifth Buddha, Maitreya Buddha. Um, the uh, Hindus are waiting for the tenth incarnation of Krishna or Kalki Avatar. Uh, sections of Islam are waiting for the return of the twelfth Mahdi who disappeared or Muntazar. Um, so you know this this idea that basic concepts are universal we see uh, in, in all kinds of different uh, aspects of uh, of you know religious spiritual traditions. And uh, it goes beyond that because the you know the uh, if 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 you would see if we would see stripping away all the dogma in in every in every religion you know that that automatically accumulates over the centuries as uh, t the teachings the original teachings are being organized so and 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 you know uh, people's interpretations are being um, uh, loaded on top of them. Uh, when we strip all that away, uh, we could see that the revelations about, uh, you know, God or or reconnecting with God are really about expanding our understanding of life, our understanding of life, uh, our understanding of reality. Um, and in system science, it's very interesting. System science, um, the uh, the latest findings point out that. Consciousness is really the basis of our physical reality, and um, it's a dimension beyond space-time. And um, if you if you see uh, the different religions throughout history as techniques to reconnect with God, and God being the basis of reality, and system science calls it so consciousness. Then every religion is really um, a, a different or, or a technique to reconnect in, in original Latin, religare or religion, or the world, where the word religion comes from. Religare. Same with the word yoga, in fact, to, to connect. Um, we, you see that every religion is a technique to reconnect with the, the foundation, the, the fundaments of our our reality we call it god if you will doesn't matter um and every religion also has the um the proclamation um or the edict that we should practice this technique in our daily lives by the golden rule treat others the way you yourself want to be treated every single religion in the world has that same notion um, so these similarities are, are, are in itself are universal. You know, there are, there are many universal notions, and that that in itself is is a universal um, occurrence. We see it in everything. Uh, if you, if, and it, it becomes very interesting now when you when you uh, go into system science. And I would really, uh, you know, I, I use uh, several of the books uh, written by Professor Irvin Laszlo. Um, quite well known, um, and especially his books, uh, What is Reality and, and the Intelligence of the Cosmos, fairly recent. Um, there's, there's other books. Uh, there's a very interesting recent report by the Galileo Commission, written by Professor Harald Wallach. Um, I believe he's Austrian. Um, uh, uh, about you know the need to expand science to include the uh, what we call the erratics, the things that that physical science cannot explain. Uh, and when you uh, when you begin to see the world through that expanded scientific lens, uh, and you and you train yourself to look for correspondences, you know it's uh, uh, it's a completely different world we're looking at. You know the. I mean, uh, different from you know the uh, the standard uh, having to compete for your existence world. I mean, yoga is a science. You know, in my book, I proved it. Yoga is a science that how it 
it fine tunes your mental and intelligent abilities to see things as they are you covered about consciousness also i won't even go there because people don't define consciousness the way you know they make it a again difficult for people so that people think it's something very outlandish where everyone is conscious being here everyone who is listening to this show and people who are not listening to this show they're all conscious beings and they have a desire to know beyond their experience very common and that is the desire which keeps us going and uh, and makes us moving forward you covered many different points but we are running out of the time so i'm going to stop this discussion today and i'm going to we're going to discuss in some other shows where all those topics in detail so consciousness also has a very finite definition for a human but in the aspirations is infinite like we like, like you mentioned the word religare which is a, a latin word for reconnect and or a roman legion connect back to the roman legion that was religare or uh, you know yoga coming from a huge dhatu of sanskrit which means again to to connect with some with a higher purpose brahma so anyway thank you so much gerard for coming on the show today and we covered wide area of topics so people can see that the aliens are not always bad and the fear industry which is running due to the hollywood movies is some aspects are true but majority aspects are based on the books and the researches of people like george adamski and and also gerard his books you should get, check out his books also thank you so much for so much for the coming uh, on the show today gerard thank you so much for having me it was a pleasure and for those viewers who are watching on the youtube you must like share subscribe and let people know about this particular aspect also namaste thank you